Chess friends, I hope you are doing well. Today, I have a very interesting and astonishing chess game that was played between me and Alpha Zero, where he just shuffles down and shocks me with his brilliance. I don't know how Alpha Zero is performing so well nowadays. I will share the chess strategies and tactics that he employed in the game. So, let's get started without wasting any time. Alpha Zero started the game with d4. We have knight to f6 to assert control over the center. c4 e6 follows in the game. Where I can play d5 or c5, and sometimes bishop to b4 follows, where knight to c3 can come in the Nimtso Indian defense. Now, we have knight to f3, and a few moves later, after bishop g2 followed by bishop to e7 happening in the game, I just want to castle, and as soon as both sides castled, alpha 0 played d5, I captured the pawn, and he should not capture back the pawn because it is well guarded by two pieces, alpha 0 makes the right approach by playing knight to h4, opening up the bishop's diagonal while also asserting control with knight to f5. This pawn is under attack by many pieces, that's why we have c6. And a few moves later, we have knight to f5 to assert control over the bishop, many players here might think of considering bishop to f6, but they are just fools, and they don't know what to do, if bishop to f6 follows in the game, you can play rook to e1, and what should you play as black? If you consider rook to e8, then alpha 0 will consider e4, kicking out the knight, and as soon as the knight moves, you can see that the knight is just shuffled down by the pawn and has to retreat, then comes knight to d6, putting pressure on these two pieces, and your position will be just vulnerable. So, going back to the position, instead of playing rook to e8, another possible move that black can play is knight to a6, he tries to develop a piece for a certain use. Then e4 will come anyway, and as the knight moves back, knight to d6 will arrive to put pressure on the bishop, as soon as the bishop captures, e5 will arrive, and you will see that your dark squared bishop will be just paralyzed, and you will lose the piece. So, going back to the position, we discovered that playing bishop to f6 is not the right approach, therefore, I decided to move my knight back to the c7 square before alpha plays e4 or e5, a few moves later, we have knight to d6, and you can see how alpha 0's knight is creating dominance over the board, the knight is located on d6 and creates immense pressure on the bishop on the light square, the rook is also there, the knight is just mastering the board like the octopus knight of Garry Kasparov. Therefore, I just move back my knight to offer an exchange, here we have e5, and I capture the knight, should I capture the knight on the d6 square? I don't think so, should alpha 0 capture the knight on the d6 square? Alpha just played pawn takes f6, he sacrificed one pawn because he wants to make his pieces very fluent and active in these two files. We have knight to c3, and as soon as the knight goes to the e4 square, Alpha Zero made a bold move. Can you guess what Alpha Zero played here? Try to pause the video and figure out what he played, the move that he played is pawn to h4, this h4 move is just mind blowing because h5 is coming to attack the queen, and you can see that the bishop and knight are just dominating the board, where bishop to e4 can be possible, the queen can also come to g4 in the future, these are Alpha Zero's plans, and after h6 followed by h5 happening again, you can see that my queen is just getting trapped in these squares. She cannot go anywhere, if you dare to consider queen to e6 for the frequent use of the queen, then g4 will arrive, therefore, after d5, attacking the knight, and after the queen moves back, knight to f5 will follow to invade these typical pawns, after knight to d6 to offer a knight exchange, alpha 0 is the boss and champion, he can shuffle you down with his crazy knight, he will play a mind-blowing move, and that is knight takes h6, sacrificing the knight right on the board, because after you capture. Bishop takes h6 will arrive, attacking the rook, as soon as the rook moves, queen to d4 will arrive, and you can see that queen to g7 check is coming, leading to checkmate, the only saving move is to play f6, but this pawn will be captured soon, you can see that black will be just dead lost because the queen will check these possible squares, rook takes e8 is possible and the king will be just vulnerable, your knight is under attack, protected by the queen, also, the rook on e8 is under attack.
which is also protected by the queen, your position will be just terrible. So, let me share an inspirational quote in sudden with you. One can choose to go back toward safety or forward toward growth, growth must be chosen again and again, fear must be overcome again and again. So, going back to the position, we discovered that playing any normal kind of move, such as e6 or queen e6, would be a very bad choice, another possible move is queen to f5, which is also bad, therefore, the queen just leaves the hotel and goes to the h7 square, on the h7 square, we have queen to g4, the queen is coming through the red carpet to check the king and queen simultaneously on the board. Therefore, 69 IQ players might think of considering queen to h8, but that will lead to knight to f6, a nightmare for the king, and he will go to hell, so, in this position, I decided to play king to h8, and here alpha zero played another mind-blowing, and brilliant move, can you guess what alpha zero played? And don't ever dare to pause the video because I am damn sure you cannot find the brilliant move, the move that alpha zero played is bishop to g5, it is a gold sacrificing move, it directly sacrifices a bishop for nothing, but wait, if you dare to capture the bishop, then knight takes g5, attacking the queen, and as soon as the queen moves, knight takes f7 will arrive to fork the pieces, you have to capture it, and therefore, rook to e8 check will arrive, forcing the king to move. The king is located on the light square, so I can make a significant move by placing my bishop on the e4 square, and after the pawn moves, check, capture, and a few moves later, you can see that the king will be just shuffled down to the f6 square, leading to checkmate in just 6 moves. So, going back to the position, we discovered that capturing the bishop would be a very bad choice, that's the reason why I decided to play f5 to exert control over these pieces, in this case, we have queen to f4, he pins down my pawn, and at the same time, I cannot capture the bishop on the g5 square, let me show you the variation why, if I do that, alpha 0 will capture the pawn, forcing the queen to move, and therefore, rook to e7 will arrive, gaining access to the 7th rank. As soon as the bishop goes to c4 to protect the square, h6 will arrive to attack the pawn, and you can see my position will be very bad, I cannot capture the pawn on h6 because there is rook to h7, which would lead to a vulnerable situation for me, therefore, in this position, can you imagine what I should play? Many players might think of considering bishop to f7, but hold on, it does not block your rook's attack, if one door closes, another opens, and therefore, h7 will arrive, this is the 10 million 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 thousand, billion move that attacks the queen, and your position will be just very bad because that pawn is well protected by the knight, and welcome to the stockfish zone. You are observing a truly masterful game, not a joker type video of someone who yells all the time, rook sacrifice rook sacrifice. Anyway, going back to the reason, we discovered that capturing the bishop is a very bad choice. And that's why we have knight to c5 to attack the knight, then we have bishop to e7, followed by knight to d3 to put pressure on these two pieces, alpha 0 played queen to d6 to attack the rook, can you play rook to e8? Let me show you the variation of what will happen if you dare to play that. Then knight to f6 will arrive to knight may or queen's position, and after capture and recapture, the king goes here, there is rook takes e8, and this will lead to a checkmate in another move, right. So, going back to the reason, the rook cannot be saved, therefore, I just captured the rook on the e1 square, and still, alpha 0 didn't capture the rook, we have some captures on the board, and bishop takes e4 to attack the queen, now we have rook to f5, and a few moves later, we have g4, followed by rook to d5 to attack the queen because, I mean, because my queen is also under attack, we have capture, recapture, and rook to e8 check, followed by bishop to g3. You can see that alpha 0 just paralyzed my whole chess position, my pieces cannot move, and even my queen cannot move, then we have c5, followed by queen to d5, attacking the rook and the bishop simultaneously, my pieces are just vulnerable, they cannot move, at the end of the day, alpha 0 was left with one rook against my knight, 
This game was completely winnable for Alpha Zero because he just needed to push forward all the pawns, first. He needed to capture all the pawns that I had, we were just maneuvering our pieces, and you can see how Alpha Zero was trying to do his best, but I just lost the game because I had the black pieces, and when I play with the black pieces, it becomes very difficult for me to win, you can see that I was left with one pawn, and that was also captured, at the end of the day, Alpha Zero was left with three past pawns with the benefit of the rook, I resigned the game here, I hope you enjoyed the game very much. If you did, then don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best. Bye bye take care and see you soon.